Welcome to Shoulder Challenge Month. I'm Dr. Jay Snibo. I'm going to be going over a video a day and how you can improve the quality and function of your shoulder girl. We're going to be going over different things, exercises, stretches, targeting the areas above, below the arm itself, also habits, goal setting, how to control the intensity of your nervous system. Now the reason why we want to put this challenge together is first off, we want to help challenge people. We want also second to have people have a good understanding of what their arms and shoulders are capable of. Not only if, in terms of the structures themselves, but also how you can adapt and certain ways you can stress those tissues, muscles, tendons, ligaments, fascia, and how you can improve the quality of function. So today, for the first day, we're going to be going over acute versus chronic healing injuries and also how we can move the arm, glenar humor joint or your ball and socket joint through the biggest range of motion possible and also your shoulder blade through the biggest range of motion possible. So let's go into acute injury healing. Now, if you've had an injury in the last few days, last week, there's a few things I want you to pay attention to and assess. First off, is there swelling? Is there bruising? Is there tenderness to the touch? If so, usually ice works well for that, whether that's 15 to 20 minutes on or into the area's numb. Wait a half hour and then continue on for a few sets if you like. But also paying attention to that if the injury is severe enough, there could be some tissue damage, whether that's major structure, structures, whether that's fractures. So this is all educational purposes only for this whole course, this whole challenge. So I suggest seeing a physician and getting it checked out. Your health is your priority and your responsibility, not reliance on me personally for each and every specific person that watches these videos. So, just have to say that first off. So, muscle contractions, ice, work really well. Now, for low level contractions, whether that's bringing your arm to your side, whether it's bringing your arms forward, shoulders back, the intensity in which you contract those muscles matter. So, whether it's barely squeezing the muscles or squeezing them as hard as you possibly can, the worse the injury, the lighter the contraction. You can go 10 to 30 seconds on and then off. On and off throughout the day. Again, depends on the injury and depends on the structure that has, that has been damaged. Now, there could be also other symptoms. Are you having weakness of your hands, fingertips, pain going down to the arms, whether that's numbness, tingling? Now, if that's the case, most commonly, you're gonna have nerve impingement either coming from the neck or impingement of the nerves coming out to the neck, through the shoulder, brachial plexus, and down the arm. For that purpose, I would suggest seeing a chiropractor or a physical therapist. They do really good work. They'll also be able to assess you. But if we're not having any of that, I'd suggest going through whether that's for acute injuries, muscle contraction, ice, and see how it plays out from there. As the, the tenderness, the bruising, swelling starts dying down, then we can progress to movements, and that's moving the arm through the biggest range of motion, pain-free possible, and then building up from there. Now, if you've had chronic injuries or injuries on and off throughout the years, or discomfort moving your arm or old injuries, there's going to be some scar tissue buildup or fibrous adhesions, if we will. Now, another thing that will work really well other than movement is heat or warm compress. And making sure you don't burn your skin, putting a layer like a, a towel in between the heat and the arm. 15-20 minutes on, half hour off, on and off throughout the day. Also making sure for the healing purposes drinking enough water, and that you're getting enough sleep and rest. Usually the tissues adapt as you're uh, resting, whether that's, like I said, naps or sleep. Now, if you're going to take naps, I wouldn't suggest going longer than 90 minutes 
because your body is adaptable on ultradian cycles of 90 minute cycles that is that's a topic for a different day so that is acute versus chronic healing injuries now let's get into how you can move your arms to the biggest range of motion possible now, and this is also something i want you to focus on and perform on a daily basis and you can also perform this multiple times throughout the day so every single person record yourself or have someone record you or set your form down on the desk on the ground because we're going to be going back through these videos and also when you do this ideally recording in the same place in which you first started so front side view images now let's have we revert to the videos here as we go through we want to make sure we isolate the ball and socket joint or your glenar humor joint so that's going to involve your arm being completely straight and it's also going to involve you not moving your torso as you go through the range of motion so you're going to start off palm facing forward your arm is going to go across your body making sure the arm is completely straight now as you go palm facing backwards to your head we're then going to start turning the thumb towards the head rotating and then back and around Opposite way, thumb should be facing backwards. We're going to go backwards first and then untwist back around palm facing forwards after that. And if you have to go watch through these videos, this is going through the biggest workspace your shoulder can go through. And we want to do this so we can incorporate the nerves to the tissues. Because if you have tarting, tar tightness, guarding tension, Nerves are going to automatically restrict you from moving into the biggest range of motion possible. The more you go through this, especially the pain-free, the more your body is going to turn off the tightness, it's going to allow better range of motion. You can look at your joints as filters of how you can move your body. And those are the first structures that send the signal up to the brain and then back down. So if there is a problem of the space of the joints, if there's arthritis, it'll delay the heat, the signal to the brain and cause more overlying muscle tightness. So this is going to do a bunch of things in terms of the quality of healing of not only the nervous system, but also as we go through the biggest range of motion possible. It's going to bring blood flow to the edges of certain tendons, certain ligaments, the structures that don't get enough blood flow. It's also going to allow waste products to get filtered out, especially past old injuries as well. So, like I said, going back, looking at these videos. Now, let's look at one from the side as well, so just to have a good idea of the whole gamut. Again, arm goes to the ear, turning your hand facing outwards, almost like you're swimming away, and back down, and then your thumb should be facing backwards. You want to start your arm coming backwards first, and then back and around in both directions from there. Beautiful. Now as you go through, if you have sharp pain, like let's say you have sharp popping discomfort or just sharp pain itself, I want you to go around it. So diminish the angle in which you rotate and then continue around it and then try to go again through the fullest range of motion just around the area of sharpness in both directions okay that's a really really important factor Again, starting backwards first and then rotating back and around now if there's popping clicking tension it's not necessarily for most people gonna lead to tissue damage a lot of times it's tendon going over bone but if you spend some time around that area so like let's say i have popping here you want to spend some time around that line of tightness with muscle contractions but we're going to get into that in a separate video so stay with us on that one so that is the ball and socket the glenar humeral joint now we want to get into the shoulder blade and the shoulder blade it moves in different ranges of motion more or less around the, the thoracic spine and around the rib cage. So the movements are a little different. Again, front and side view images or videos, excuse me. But we also want to make sure that the arm's completely straight and then that we're not moving the rib cage. So I'll play this so you have a good idea. 
We want to first start by bringing your arm forward, shrugging up, together, down, and then forward again in an opposite direction. Back, shrug up, and forward, and reach. Both arms. So as we go through this, we want to assess the shrugging of the shoulders, how high we can come up, how much we can depress down, and a better view on the side, how far we can go forward, how far we can bring our shoulder blades back. Beautiful. And so the same principles occur of moving the whole joint through the biggest range of motion possible. However, the scapula thoracic joint or moving your scapula, it's not necessarily a synovial joint. It's all muscles, especially the serratus anterior going, it's a muscle goes from your rib cage to the shoulder blade. That's involved in a bunch of different movements, but that is gonna be the focus for today and for your understanding. So the challenge for today is both arms moving at least five times, two different sessions, clockwise and counterclockwise. You can do more and ideally every single day performing this. It's, it's an assessment of your body. It's also a way that you can improve the tightness, guarding tension, especially even if you have stiffness when waking up in the morning. So for most people, doing these ranges of motion before bed and in the morning works really well prepping you for the day and also prepping you for sleep as well. So that is the challenge for day one. I look forward to, you. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and on the next one. Best of luck and let's start off strong. Woo!